Hey everyone, in this video I want to draw another pair of eyes below. So I'm going to draw eyes from, yeah, I drew male eyes, female eyes, and now from a kid. Um, the, the shape of kids' eyes can differ a bit, but again, the eyes from any person, any child, uh, it can all be different. So I chose this reference to draw from. And I'm going to show you how I draw this step by step. So let's start with the middle line. And I always sketch using an HB pencil. And I draw the line just by going, keep on going back and forth. And I always use light pressure when I draw because you want to be able to erase these guidelines. So I'm drawing a middle line, a middle vertical line, and then um, usually the space um, for in between the eyes is the same as the width of the eyes itself. But in this case, if you look at the reference photo, the eyes are a bit, a bit um, less wide. So the inside of the eye would be around here. And you can measure like I'm doing with my pencil to see if you're drawing it the same width. I want to draw this one a bit wider. So the inside, yeah, uh, in this case, look at the reference photo, the shape of the eye is a bit, the inside of the eyes is a bit wider. So here is like a highlight and then I have the width of the eyes here. And you can measure, so I have the width of the eyes about the same, but then the inside of the eye is a bit wider and again that's for this reference photo i'm using so for every reference photo you can observe it you can like uh, check it on your phone you can use your pencil you can or even a ruler and then you can measure each eye see if they're the same width uh, measure the inside of the eyes see if that is a bit wider in this case or maybe they're like here they were it was uh, just three equal spaces so uh, measure that, observe your reference photo. Before you start drawing. That's what I do and it really helps me when I'm drawing the actual uh, drawing. So the corner of the eye is a bit lower. And also look at the shape of the eye that you're going to draw. Here it goes, curves really down. So instead of like an almond shape, uh, the shape is different. So observe the reference photo, observe the shape. Try to look at the eye as if you see these um, different, yeah, all of these shapes that you can look at. I'm actually going to sharpen my pencil. I like to draw with a sharp um, pencil tip. Yeah. 
and the crease lines are really close to the eyes and if you look at the left crease line it's closer to the eye than the right one and then here you don't see it it goes here you don't see the crease line it goes on the same line as the eye of the eyelid and then here you do see a bit more of the crease line so you see how the eyes aren't exactly um, hundred percent symmetrical if you want to draw it the same if you want to create the same likeness and now the eyebrows so the like the highlight here for the nose and then here around here is where the eyebrow starts and then usually i go like this and that's where um, it ends the eyebrow ends And I draw some hairs like the, the always at the beginning there they go up here a bit to the left and then start to go down now let's look at the iris so I look at the inside of the the inside yeah the eyeball white i compare it a bit so that i make sure that i draw the iris in the middle And you can measure to be sure. And look at the highlight you see in the eye. Um, if it's from the left on this eye, then it's also from the left on this iris. And you see the pupils really small And then here's where the lashes will be. So you see the upper lid is really dark. The crease line is in shadow. But again here you, you see less of the crease line than on this side. Okay. 
Okay, so once you have the sketch, you can remove the guidelines. And you can check if you're satisfied with the placement of both of the eyes. And once you start um, sketching a bit further, then you um, it's always possible to correct. You might notice something you don't notice now. Um, that happens to me sometimes. Then I think, hey, um, one eye is maybe a bit too high or too low. So just start somewhere and go from there and keep on checking, keep on looking back and comparing to the reference photo. So if you're sketching with an, eight B, uh, with an HB pencil with light pressure, you should be able to erase easily. Okay, so let, now let's start. I'm going to use the 2B mechanical pencil and start to define the sketch a bit more and go over and keep on comparing and checking the reference photo. And you, um, you can always use a ruler if your reference photo is the same size. You can use a ruler to measure and, and just check the width of the eyes, the height. And what helps for me, like I said, is um, observing the reference photo uh, in the beginning before I draw. I um, use my pencil and I measure things on the reference photo because sometimes your eye wants to, or your mind, it wants to draw something, it wants to draw both of the eyes, um, like what looks good, but if you want to create the same likeness as in the reference photo, you want to actually draw what, yeah, what you see and not what you think you see in the reference photo. So sometimes I think, um, some, like an eye should be wider, but then I measure it on the reference photo and I think, hey, it's actually not that wide as I thought. And um, this eye um, looks a bit, if I look at the, compare the eyeball white, you see it's just a bit um, wider than this eye. Maybe maybe the this child is squinting one eye a bit. So if you want to create, again, if you want to create the same likeness, um, draw exactly what you see in the reference photo and not what you think you see. So that's really an important thing if you want to draw from reference photo and create the same likeness. It sometimes even helps if you turn your drawing upside down so that you don't focus on these two eyes but really the shape of the eyes and try to draw exactly what you see in the reference photo. Instead of looking at these two eyes And once you draw a lot, you will get better at observing the reference photo and drawing what you see. So next, after these two eyes, um, maybe I think I want to combine facial features, like drawing two eyes and as well as a nose and a mouth. Um, not the whole portrait yet, but like um, combining two eyes and then um, measuring. So starting with refer uh, with uh, guidelines, because usually the space from the brows, the nose, and the chin and then the hairline, those are three equal spaces. So how can you measure and draw the nose on the correct guideline, the mouth on the correct guideline, and both of the eyes? 
So with the eyes, I just start with one line. You want to make sure that you're not drawing one eye too high or too low. Just start with one horizontal line with a vertical line, then measure the space in between the eyes. Is it the is it an equal space, like the width of the eyes, or is it more? Observe. Check your reference photo. So I always say learning how to draw is um, learning how to see. So you're not only learning how to draw something, you're also learning how to see. Learn how to observe your reference photo. Um, learn how to look for shapes. It's, uh, I feel like I'm repeating myself when I say this every time, but um, it's what helped me when I look at something. I imagine a shape around it. So for these eyes, you can imagine a rectangle around it with a middle line. Um, it will help you to focus on the shapes of the eyes instead of thinking, okay, I'm going to draw two eyes. How I'm going to, how am I going to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some hairs. Okay, I think I'm going to darken the iris first. And then I'm going to shade a bit around the eyes, add a bit of shading. And then the overall eyes are pretty dark, so I think I'm going to switch to a darker pencil after the shading. So here I see the eyeball, uh, the under, the lower eyelid, it goes over the iris, so I had it a bit lower here, I'm drawing it a bit higher. So keep on checking your proportions, that's what I mean. Throughout the drawing, just keep on checking. Now with the HB, I'm just going to start to add some shading. So here I, I have a line, but in the reference photo, it's like yeah, smooth transition from uh, different values. And I'm not going to, I don't want to shade this uh, like realistically. I want to keep this more sketched. That's, <laughs> that's what I keep saying about the drawings in my sketchbook. And they usually turn out a bit more realistic than sketched. But for me, this is more sketched version than what I'm, than what I usually draw. And one thing that I don't like about these, uh, this so you see the paper it moves, it keeps on moving. So I have my hand here, so to hold the paper in place. But I do like it that um, the paper stays flat, it lays flat with the with these rings, but it moves. So yeah. I don't really I haven't really found my favorite drawing sketchbook yet. And I know with those other drawing um, sketchbooks you can have a clip here to keep the or here on the on the edge to keep the paper um, staying flat when you're drawing. I do like the smoothness of this paper and it's just thick enough for a sketchbook, for sketching, for realistic shading. You want the paper a bit uh, thicker because you want to be able to build up layers and be able to add, keep on adding layers until you get a really dark value. With sketching you don't have to build up all of these layers. So this paper it is fine for sketching. So when I shade, I also hold my pencil a bit more to the back, so I shade with this side of the pencil lead. You can shade a bit more smoother that way, get a smoother layer. OK. 
Okay, now let's blend this. And then here in between the eyebrows, usually a bit shading. So I just use the graphite that's on the stump. Add that. And the inside of the eye looks funny now because I didn't draw the iris or I didn't fill in the iris yet. But the eyeball white isn't completely white, so always remember to shade that as well. And then if you need to bring up back any highlights, you can use the kneaded eraser or lighten, just gently dab like that, usually here, um, between the eyebrow and the upper eyelid, it's highlight and then here, and then you can shade. If you have any eraser strokes, you can smoothen that with the blending stump again. Okay, I want to add um, some shading to the iris. I'm only adding it below because um, the above um, it's darker. So that's what I'm going to do in a moment, but I forgot to shade. Add some graphite here on the iris. Okay, so now I'm going to use the... This is the Pit Graphite. This is the 6B. I want to darken with this. You can also just use the 6B Graphite Pencil or the 8B Graphite Pencil. Um, but these pencils are just a bit darker. So if you add darker value to your drawing, you will create a contrast that will make your drawing pop. You need to add it to the correct areas, of course. And if you make sure that your highlights are light enough and your shadows dark enough, that's when you will really make your drawing pop and look 3D. I'm looking at all of the areas where it's darker, the eyebrow. And I'm using these pencils to darken, but I don't really like to use them for the shading. So, um, yeah, I haven't um, used them a lot yet. Because I'm still thinking how they will work for me. So I don't like them for the shading. I prefer the 9000 graphite pencils. Those are the smoothest and softest. softest. 
I prefer those for the shading. And then to add darker value, I use a black colored pencil. That's my favorite combination. But I'm trying out uh, different things because you can always um, yeah, try out different materials, see if that works better or not, or see if you like that. It's also a challenge to keep the pupils like the same size and that will make um, if you draw the pupils not exactly in the middle of the iris and not the same size you can make the person look cross-eyed so that's also a thing you want to pay attention to and it can be a challenge but try to pay attention to that and also try to keep in mind that the more you're drawing the more you're training your hand um, to be more precise and eventually to get better at drawing. So train your hand, try to draw every day. And if you're not drawing something, uh, just try to practice the movement, uh, draw some lines, uh, some shapes, whatever. You can draw anything, just keep on training your hand so that it's um, you're able to draw what you want. And that your hand will move in a way and that if you want to draw smaller things that you have that control over your pencil with your hand and it can sound strange like train your hand but with anything you need to get better you need to train your eyes you need to train your hand to draw i can tell you what to do and show you the steps but your hand needs to draw this um, itself so Draw as much as you can, if you like it, if you enjoy yourself, if you're having, um, yeah, if you enjoy drawing, of course. If you don't, if you just want to like, uh, if you just like to watch others drawing, it's also fine. It can also be um, fun and calming just to watch someone other, just to watch others draw something and seeing it all come together. So with the blending stem, I'm going to shade. Now with the 2B, I want to add a bit darker shading here. here below the eyebrow I shaded over this part but it's I want to keep that highlight. So look at the skin around the eye. Where do you see that it's a bit darker? That will make the this will make the eye look a bit more round instead of flat because you can darken the eye, but if you don't add shading around it, it can still look flat. So have you ever tried drawing a sphere going from a flat circle, like a sketch of a circle? Yes, you can draw a circle, but now how can you shade it? How can you make that circle go from flat to round to create a sphere? 
and that's with shading, creating value, um, highlight, midtones, and shadows. That's how you will create something round, and it's the same with any uh, drawing. The correct values is what will make your drawing. So the sketch will need to be right, the proportions will need to be okay, but then the values is what will make your drawing look better. Okay, and I'm going to draw the eyelashes. Yeah, they're pretty dark, so I'm going to draw them first with this. And here they go down, straight forward and down. You don't really see, you don't see them going up. So that's what I mean with you, you might automatically want to draw the lashes going up, but look at the reference photo. And in this case, the eyelashes are going uh, to the front, but those lashes you don't see, and some are going down here. So draw what you see. Here it's all more shadow, so I want to darken that later. Here's shadow, and then here you see the lashes going down. Really short lashes. Don't draw them longer than they are. You don't want to give this child some long lashes or um, you don't want to draw these lashes like uh, the child is wearing mascara or something. So here the eyelashes are going down. And this needs to be darker, so... I think I'm going to use the 8B, this is the Pitt Graphite Matte. Let's see if I can darken with this pencil. And I sharpened it, you see, and I like to draw with a sharp tip so that I can get every detail that I need. So I'm darken. And I don't want to darken this too much compared with the rest because I didn't don't darken those too much. Um, but yeah. These eyes are a bit darker, so. And then with really light pressure, I add a bit of shading here. Or you can switch to an another pencil that I just used the same pencil, but then with really light pressure. Here I use a bit more medium pressure to darken. Here it actually goes a bit further. This wrinkle is a bit darker. Let me see another wrinkle. So you see the upper eyelid is darkest, the darkest value you see. So you can compare that. Where do you see that same dark value? Um, the upper eyelid, then maybe the pupil is as dark, and then some parts here in the eyebrow. Where it's dark, so that's how you can compare values. So that, not, um, so that you don't only just darken uh, one area and then you leave the eyebrows lighter. So if you darken um, 
what needs to be darker, then you also need to darken the other areas that need to be darker. If you only focus on the eyes and then you don't darken the eyebrows. So I like to compare the values that way in the reference photo. And if I didn't darken the, uh, the, with this pencil, then I, um, so I kept everything a bit lighter, it's also fine. But don't darken one area and then leave the rest lighter. So when, you, uh, when you're finished, you can always step back or take a short break, come back with fresh eyes. It really helps um, to step away for a moment. And this crease line started to get thicker and thicker. So just want to fix that because it's bothering me. So I lighten it, then I use the blending stump so you don't have any eraser strokes like this. And then I'm going to darken. So when you dark, that's why I like to have a sharp pencil because you can, you might thicken a line that you don't want. Just darken a bit. Here, this line. So for the shading, I just use the blending stump. I like how that looks. Okay, I think the um, eyebrows go a bit more, a bit lower here. And then here you see some more of those the uh, loose hairs get a bit more messy. Then I think I'm going to call this sketch finished. So if you have any ideas for future videos or any portraits, I would love to hear your ideas. Um, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. If you want to learn something, or maybe if you have any questions, just let me know.
you know, he blends some more, uh, the, so the beautiful thing of these, of the iris, so this beautiful lighter area and then a shadow, and then the um, edge of the iris is really dark, really beautiful eyes. You don't have to draw all of those details, but make sure you draw that. Um, um, the 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 darks, the lights, the midtones, and the darks, like the the values. Okay, I'm going to call this drawing finished. I enjoyed sketching these eyes. Um, maybe they turned out a bit more realistic again, but yeah, hey, that's just my style. I just like to add shading, uh, make them look round, make them pop from the paper. And you can do that by using dark contrast, and these um, pencils are great for that. Uh, I wouldn't use them for shading, but may, uh, yeah, it's just a preference. You can try out uh, different pencils see which one you prefer and you can see here I started a bit lighter I didn't go darker than the 4b here I darkened a bit more with the 6b and then here I used the 8b to darken but these eyes are also a bit darker than um, here in the reference photo so um, yeah, maybe darken just a bit if I compare to the other ones but that's also, yeah, if you draw, draw three eyes on the same page, then you start to compare them a bit, but they are just, yeah, they have nothing to do with um, each other. So for the next sketch, I think I'm just going to draw one thing on, uh, on the page. And remember to draw the date on your um, drawing. You can also do it on the back. I hope you were able to learn something from this video. And I'll see you in one of the next.